All right, thanks for tuning into this broadcast. Listen, you're watching the Watchman broadcast. Um, this is a new podcast that um, is uh, launched um, some some weeks ago, and kind of been uh, tweaking some things and making some decisions on some things that we want to talk about. And I'm going to go over a few things that um, I think you should know. Uh, hopefully, you'll become a faithful follower and uh, help me in what I believe is to bring truth um, to the times that we're in, truth to your life, truth to your situation, um, truth to your knowledge of, of God, um, wherever truth finds its way into your life, I truly believe that is what God wants. Um, and unfortunately, or fortunately, sometimes, or a lot of times, truth uh, in order for us to get the truth um, to people, that truth is uh, predicated on the fact that uh, there is something that God wants us to know that we may not be aware of. Uh, and it comes to us in, in, in the form of a warning. Uh, that is why we uh, call it one of the reasons we call it here the Watchman um, podcast, because um, I just felt a real unction by God to begin to share with you. Um, some things that he has put in my heart um, to share with the body of Christ, to advance the body of Christ. And so I'll be approaching this from the uh, position or the posture uh, of the watchman, um, which we find in the book of Ezekiel. I'll go over that some more uh, a little bit in this uh, broadcast to uh, help you to understand better uh, if you don't already know. Um, the role of the watchman and um, but that is to warn to warn and uh, the only way to truly warn is to face things head on with the truth and so that's what we will do here we will seek God for the truth um, as we bring what God wants the body of Christ his children and even the world to know um, about what's on his heart, what's on his mind concerning his entire creation. Um, so um, now I do need to do this. I, I need to do this publicly. Um, I, I want to get this sort of off my chest, if you will. And that is I want to make, uh, I want to publicly repent. Uh, I did, I, I felt that I repented to God and I'm going somewhere. I felt that I repented to God about this broadcast and, and setting this up because this has been months in the makings. Uh, and that is, I was a bit apprehensive. Um, I, was, I was actually being mm, uh, stubborn when God put it on my spirit. Um, and I had to weigh it and I had to know it was God. But then when I realized it was truly God, um, based on things concerning my personal life, things concerning ministry, things concerning what we see going on in the body of Christ, things that we see in the world, and so on. Um, and to speak on certain things that the truth had to come forth, knowing that the backlash, uh, the retaliation that might come my way, my, like most people, I did not want to deal with that aspect of it. Uh, it may have the ability to uh, uh, um, um, singe some friendships, uh, uh, um, um, some resources. Um, it just has the ability, when you've been called by God, to bring forth his truth. It can, it can bring controversy. And these things I didn't want to deal with. I actually lost sleep over this um, but then I had to realize that it was God speaking and it was what he called me to do and so father publicly I repent and um, I ask your forgiveness and with that I ask or I yield myself completely unto you that you might speak to me show me the things that you want me to know things that you want me to share um, with your people whether it be in uh, a warning or whether it be with your pleasure I will operate 
uh, totally equally, no matter what it comes. And I will rely on you um, to help me and keep me. So with that said, um, I'm going to go forth um, and talk about some things. Now, what you're going to find, we're going to talk about a lot of things on the on the Weissman, um podcast here. We're going to talk about uh, uh, politics. Yep, we're going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about family. Um, we're going to talk about ministry, leadership, um, current events. Um, we're going to talk about everything pertaining, amen, to um, the voice of God as he sees fit in the time he sees fit for it. Uh, there's so many things that I've been seeing um, that I want to talk about. Um, and we'll get to those things. Um, there have been some posts on social media of some things that I've, I've taken issue with. Um, and certainly there's enough on YouTube uh, when it comes to the church, when it comes to politics and how the church is involved and uh, the reactions that we're getting from different ones concerning different policies. Um, one of the things I really want to talk about eventually as we go forth uh, when it comes to the political uh, dialogue is uh, I've, I find that a lot of people understand or do not understand how to make right decisions when it comes to the political aspect of things as a Christian. Um, but one, I think one of the most underlying factors that puts a lot of Christians at a real big disadvantage is that a lot of Christians don't understand the basic civics. They don't understand how government actually works. And so a lot of people who make decisions when it comes to politics or uh, uh, the Bible, the left, the right, a lot of it is based on spin. A lot of it is based on sensationalism. Uh, and a lot of people don't do their homework in the body of Christ. And I really believe that if you're going to be effective in, in, in understanding and knowing what your true position is when it comes to uh, politics that go against your faith, your religion, uh, you really need to know two things. You need to know the word of God and you need to know how things work. It is important to understand because when we understand how things work, we understand and know the word of God. We know how to position ourselves and how to pray, what to pray for. It's important. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not smart to pray and take on uh, other people's agenda based on how they sound and even based on them presenting uh, information that seems like it, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, authentic, if you will, truth. And we have to be willing to, to know how to dissect, to analyze, to discern what is God and what is not when it comes to our politics. And we do have a role in politics as believers. Uh, uh, trust me on that. I'll talk to you some more about that when we... Uh, talk about politics and some things that are going on, going on and that'll be right around the corner that won't be far off um, we're going to talk about education the role of parents when it comes to education for believers considering the things that are going on in our public school systems one of the things that I learned a long time ago is if you want to change the course of future generations the most powerful institution in the world especially in our country the most powerful institution uh, uh, is, is, is the institution of education because when you have access to young minds amen you can shape the future by what you instill uh, in those uh, that are present you can, you, you can shape the future and the outcome of things based on information that is uh, 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 given. The type of education, uh, the types of ideologies, um, all of the, the self-awareness stuff that is coming on, coming out and being taught now. Um, and so we'll be talking about that as well and the role that parents uh, need to uh, know about, I believe. 
uh, I believe there's a dire warning that needs to come. When we look at our public education system, we really need to understand that there's some things as Christians that we really need to be uh, 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 on point with. So we'll, we'll be talking uh, about that as well. Um, uh, we'll be talking uh, about marriage. Um, again, leadership. Um, we'll be talking um, about um, things that are taking place in the body of Christ. We'll be talking about false prophets. Um, we'll be talking about doctrine. Um, things that are designed to help people to know and understand and to truly advance the body of Christ. These things, I believe, believe need to be talked about. Now, let me uh, um, preface all of this with me saying my position. Uh, and I give this testimony quite often. And the testimony that I share is this. Um, I tell people all the time, and you've heard the old adage, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. And one of the, the, the one, one phase in my life through, throughout uh, in the last 20 years, um, there was a point, and I believe a lot of leaders go through it, where I wanted to be recognized for the work that I was doing. Um, and I also had to feel, felt like there was more that I could do or there could be more exposure to what I was doing if I connected with the right people. Um, and, th and that's an ongoing thing now. It, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's ministry, whether it's entertainment, sports, um, uh, uh, whether it's, it's, it's um, uh, uh, um, the marketplace, um, whatever it is, people look for that positioning um, or connecting with others um, to be able to go further, get more exposure. And so this was one of my uh, issues at one time. And I really was seeking out people and ministries that could help further my personal ambitions. And I'm going to use that term a lot tonight. My personal ambitions were at sometimes more important than what I was really called to do. And a lot of people won't admit it, but a lot of people find themselves there. Who can I hook up with? Who's hot right now? Who, 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 who can I get close to that I can share my gift and let them see how fabulous I am at what I do, how anointed I am at what I do in order that they might uh, put a word in for me or, uh, 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 yeah, speak uh, good things about me so that others might uh, take notice. Um, and... I, I got to tell you, it never happened. God did not let that desire come to fruition in my life. And there was some level of disappointment. It caused me to have some low, some low times in ministry. Um, I was in, I was in not in good spaces at time yet doing ministry, uh, yet doing what I, called fulfilling my calling but yet inside not feeling uh, satisfied because of my own personal um, ambitions and at some point it came to a head but what helped me to understand it is when Holy Spirit really spoke to me to let me know that it was not God's will for me to connect with others um, has I desired to for that purpose because the real motivation was not that Christ would be lifted but that I would be lifted and so God kept me and I got to tell you I am so grateful that God did not allow for my wish my desire my prayer if you will to come to pass because it would have compromised what I really been called to do by God. It would, it would have interfered with my desire and willingness to be able to speak truth, to be able to 
to to declare uh, 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 and proclaim Christ with a with a clear heart and a clear conscience. No, now now that doesn't mean that I've not made mistakes along the way. Of course, we've all made mistakes, but I'm saying with the with, with it being objective uh, and 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 and. Uh, um, or would it being subjective would have caused failure? Had, had God dealt with me and allowed me to have what I desired based on how I felt, it would have been a train wreck. And so God didn't allow it. And I see in the aftermath, I see as I look, look, look in the rearview mirror, I see where God was protecting me from what I desired. He was protecting me. Why am I going here? Because there's a lot of people, and some of you are listening to me today. Some of you are watching this broadcast, and your leaders. Um, you you may not be pastors or senior leaders, but you're you're in that place where you you want to be recognized. And I want to I want to share with you the great thing about hearing from God when He says no. He's always protecting us he's always protecting us and we may think that our personal ambitions once they're met that we can do more for God but anything that we put before God or allow for God to use um, us to get us where he wants us is 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 failure I, I need to be able to do for God what God has called me to do regardless to who pays attention to me, regardless to who gives me accolades, there ought to be no issue. There ought to be nothing that I desire more than being able to speak truth and speak it from a place of, uh, uh, of a sincere heart to serve and to honor God. And God spared me. He didn't answer my prayer. The Bible said there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death. It seemed right to me that if I got in position with certain ones, that it would elevate me and put me out there. When the truth of the matter is, what my real focus should have been was to be where I could be at the feet of people who have and know the things that I need to know who could impart in me and make me more prepared for ministry. And that should have been the focus. And there was a time when that was not the focus. I thank God now for the people that I do have in my life that are able to speak to me or speak into my life and help me to go to that next level. I may not have all of the uh, resources that some other leaders and ministries might have. I may not have the following, um, but I have the work and I have the Lord behind the work and I just have to allow for God to be the judge as to whether or not what I'm doing is pleasing and not to look for the accolades and the, and, 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 and the please and to please men and only to please God. So with all of that said, I know that's been some rambling, um, but I just want to let you know that my premise for wanting to do this or uh, 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 yielding to God to do this is that he, he set me up for it. And so I plan to speak to you from a place of transparency um, when it comes to certain things that we'll talk about on this podcast. Um, and I'll talk to you about what the Bible says and what God has shown me. Um, and prayerfully, what comes forth out of these broadcasts will bless you. I hope they, that's my prayer. So today I want to talk about something that is really uh, has, 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 has bothered me for some time. And, and I want to talk about uh, this is something that's bothered me for years. And um, because it was a burden on my heart, um, I believe God um, saw fit, I know he did, to begin to give me revelation on this. I, I didn't understand it. I, I didn't understand what I was feeling. Um, and it had to do with conferences, 
conferences, Christian conferences, leadership conferences, uh, prophetic conferences, um, faith conferences, um, conferences, 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 uh, annual conferences. And the Lord began to give me revelation on why conferences are uh, uh, at, at, at one of the main main stays of, of of ministry of this 21st century ministry, um, uh, there were back in the day when I was coming up, there weren't a lot of conferences. They, there were revivals. Uh, we had a lot of revivals. Yes, there were anniversaries. We'll talk about that soon. Um, but there was no. There was there was there was there was no conferences at least at the level that we are seeing at like we're seeing now. There there's a conference for everything. Oh, there's a conference. You can find a conference in the body of Christ, or yeah, you can find a conference that is connected to. Hmm. No, you can find a conference that bears the. The, the, the concept and the idea uh, 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 of Christian focus, if you will, that has a lot of problems. And I want to talk about it today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do like a little part one and a part two. And uh, when I come back with the second part of this, I plan on having some graphics and some, some, some other things uh, uh, for you. But one of the things that, that, that I, I found out and in, in, in what God showed me, he said to me, he said, be, be aware or observant of themes of conferences. Themes. Themes. What, what is the theme of the conference? What is the, what is the focus of the conference? And he says, watch the wording. Watch watch." And, 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 and know better uh, what is being promoted, what is being marketed, and, 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 and let that simmer. And that's what I did. That's what I did. So my, 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 my reference for all of this had to begin with conferences that I myself attended, conferences that I, was, um, uh, I had some, some hand in promoting, um, and in some instances, uh, I, I, we were the uh, media uh, uh, aspect uh, of, of conferences. And so uh, after sitting in many conferences over the years, I was able to sum up a few things about what I experienced. And uh, I think the most notable and we're going to get back to the theme, but the most notable uh, thing that I've seen in so many conferences is that the amount of conferences that I went to were conferences that lasted two days, three days, and even in some instances, four-day conferences that ended day in and day out until the conclusion of the conference where there was never an altar call. Where there was never an altar call. So the assumption was that everybody at the conference, because they were registered, um, because they bought the merchandise, because they were in the audience, because they participated in the breakout sessions, um, because they uh, dined in the banquets and because they participated in the awards that were given out, um, that they were saved, that they were born again. And God began to show me that everybody that attends conferences who profess to know the Lord, and that's their premise for being there, um, one of the premises for them being there, um, he showed me that there were so many that were missing, um, missing the point that they, many of them are not saved. 
to assume that everybody that comes to a conference or gathering of two or 300 people, even if it's 20 or 25 people, to assume that everybody is born again, saved in the gathering, it's foolishness. And that's all I, I can call it. I can call it malpractice, spiritual malpractice. One of the one of the most important factors, and one of the more important one of the most important things that we as leaders are called to do, is to keep the opportunity for salvation to come to the life of all of those that we come into contact with, and the Bible says even to be ready to give a word. Um, and we don't see that in many of the conferences. And again, many of the conferences, now there were some, oh yeah, there were some, but for the most part, the conferences and their purposes, a lot of them, I realized, had to do with personal ambitions, building personal um, ministries in the name of Christ. And what I'm saying to you is that any time that we find that to be the case, that what we're doing or what we're following is we're following the disingenuous uh, 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 acts of people who are focused on their personal ambitions and attaching God's name to it. Is that the case with every conference? Of course not. But I'm sharing with you today that you need to be aware of what you're connecting to. You need to, 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 to be aware and know what it is that's at play and not be caught up in patronizing. We, we don't patronize in the body of Christ like we patronize in the world, like we patronize businesses. I, I, I shouldn't feel led or I, I shouldn't feel pressure to, to attend your conference because you attended mine. You see, now the spirituality, the whole notion of what, what, what it means and the, and the purpose of the conference, which should be to advance the kingdom of God, that, that's what it should be for. Um, and we have to be careful. that we don't allow for ourselves to be led away from God from false pretenses or under false pretenses. I want to give you a little more of what, 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 I, what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is that much of what we see when it comes to conferences, regardless to what's in their theme or what's in their title, much of what we see is disconnected from biblical foundation. And, I, and I'll share it with you why. One of the things that, that has to happen when we have a conference and someone would say, well, that's, that's normal. Well, let me, let me explain to you what I'm saying. One of the things that has to happen is that whoever the presenters are in the conferences, they have to now, after they've been invited, they have to now come up with messages that align with the conference theme. Hmm. And what aligns with the conference theme it's important to understand that if I'm going to give a true message, a message that truly aligns with God's will based on a theme, verbiage, words, 
that have that that form the the concept, the whole idea of it. If I'm now forced to put together a message that aligns with it, it is very easy now to 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 get to a place where I'm just at it and I'm doing what I'm doing in order that I can uh, 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 meet the challenge, if you will, of bringing forth a message that was supposedly given by God to the host. And it's very important for us to understand that sometimes and many times a lot of the people that come together know nothing of one another. And if they do know something about one another, the question now has to be, where is the discernment on what is about to transpire? What is the discernment of what I'm participating in based on what, what God is saying at, in the moment and as it pertains to that, to that event? I know that sounds like a word salad, but we're going to make some sense of it in a minute. What we're called to do in those gatherings is we're supposed to promote and advance the kingdom of God. I remember some years ago I did a conference, and, I, and, and this was so, this is where I believe God was trying to show me back then. This is some 12, 13 years ago I was actually speaking at a conference, which I did, and they had a theme. I forget the theme at this moment. But when I, when I was contacted by the host, the host said these words to me. Our theme is such and such. But I want you to minister what the Lord gives you. Hmm. We don't, we don't, we don't operate in that fashion anymore. The other thing we'll get into is the financial, the financials behind all of this. It, it, will, it, will op- it will open your eyes when you see what has to come, what has to take place, the, 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 the financial arrangements that have, to, that, have to, uh, that have to be met by presenters to bring the, the word of God before they mount the stage and the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the lodging, um, uh, the transportation, uh, all of these things, all of this has to, has to mesh. Um, because some presenters, depending on where they are, they're not coming to your conference. First of all, they want to know how many people does your church hold? Where is this event taking place? They, they want to know because it, it becomes a money grab. I'm going somewhere and I need you to understand what I'm saying. So we need to we need to we need to be able to recognize if we're going to participate either as a as a presenter or someone that is just attending the conference. We have to be able to discern whether or not this this event is truly beneficial to my relationship with God, my growth and the impact that it's going to have on my life, if it's going to have impact on my, my, my ministry, my, my, my marriage, or anything else that I'm involved in where God needs to be uh, 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 at the head of it, the center of it. And so, uh, and, and I say that because a lot of people don't factor that in. I got to go because they came to mind and... We're friends, and I'm going to support them. Um, it's very easy to send the wrong message. Let me give you scripture and, 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 and share with you um, why I believe that much of what we're supposed to be doing for God undermines, when it comes to conferences, undermines the really, the perfect uh, 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 will of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first to uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy says this, for the time will come, 
This is First Timothy, I'm sorry, Second Timothy, chapter 4, verses three, uh, 3 and 4. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. The Bible says that instead of, instead, uh, they will suit their own desires. They will gather around them a great number of teachers to say the things their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn to fables or to myths. And so prophetically, the scripture prophetically highlights the fact there's a pattern of deception in this present age. And when it comes to conferences, themes are often designed to appeal to people's emotions. I, I want you to write that down. Many times, themes are designed to appeal to people's emotions and their fleshly desires. Why? Because people want to feel good. And, 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 and what happens when people want to feel good what happens when, 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 when people's emotions are, 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 are at the center of what we're doing, um, when their fleshly desires are being met, what happens now, what is presented is void, generally void of doctrinal substance. Because now, based on a theme, I have to connect what I'm saying or where it, uh, if I'm a presenter, I have to connect with what the host is is presenting. Now, let me help you. There's a lot of spiritual warfare that goes along with us connecting with people who we have not prayed about, who we have not consecrated about being uh, 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 connected with them, that we have not spent any time with God giving us uh, to show them. Uh, I see people all the time who fill their calendars. That, that's what they do. A lot of presenters, they, they, they start now to fill their calendars uh, for the next year because it's their livelihood. And so it is impossible for me to believe, almost impossible for me to believe that if you have a full calendar of speaking engagements week in, week out, um, it is, it, it's almost impossible or really rare um, when to, to, to be able to, to, to minister to different groups of people focusing on different themes, are you hearing me, that really pierce and, and, and touch the situation of the people that are attending these, these conferences. Not to mention, or, or to mention once again, the reason why people are attending these conferences and these events in the first place. It is a real uh, issue and there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things going on and what it comes down to eventually is who can create the most hype and who can create the most emotionalism in order to move the crowd are you hearing me and 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 a lot of people um and i and i heard my my good friend uh uh, Jack Cook say it. Many people are more important, are more are more focused on on moving the crowd rather than the cloud. Meaning God, meaning uh, a moving uh, people in a carnal sense, uh, 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 rather than bringing the Holy Spirit, God, into the situation. And that's where a lot of people are. And so we miss the opportunity. To really present and advance the kingdom of God. And so when the leader has to craft topics that align with itching ears. And that's what's happening in majority of the conferences. Many of the conferences, let me say, that are, that are going on day in and day out. It is a problem in the body of Christ. Now you may not agree with me. But you need to understand because there's somebody who has seen it on both ends. I've been behind the scenes and I saw what goes on behind the scenes. I, I, I've seen the negotiations. I've seen negotiations break because the money wasn't right. I just got in trouble right there. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it. 
And again, I want to go back to what I said about when God was protecting me. I'm so thankful that he didn't answer my prayer because I could have been caught up in all of this. I'm speaking to you from a place of seeing it from both sides. I've been on that side uh, uh, um, where I was just a participant, but I've also been behind the scenes. I've also been engaged my own self in negotiations, and it was the most uncomfortable situation negotiating on the gospel and how it would be presented, who would present it, and what they would be charging. That's what it comes down to. What they would be charging. They call it an honorarium. But when you put a price on it, it is no longer an honorarium. It is a charge for the gospel. Are you hearing me? And so this is one of the things that happened. And so what happens now, if, if, if I have to teach a message or present a message now that, 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 that aligns with itching ears, what I'm doing now is I'm steering you further away from the gospel. I'm steering you away from, as the scripture says, sound teaching. Okay? And what I'm doing is I'm, is I'm creating and crafting the type of message that, that serves personal agendas. And that's why many people attend conferences because they have personal agendas. They're going, and what is their personal agenda? They need a word. They need a word. They need, a, they need the next prophecy. And this is dangerous in the body of Christ. Very, very dangerous in the body of Christ. And the problem is that it's happening. It's, it's going on right now. It's going to be next weekend and the weekend after and the weekend after and the weekend after and the weekend after. And it'll, it'll happen until Christ comes. Are you hearing me? I want to give you a little more. And, uh, and then we'll, 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 we'll come back and, and, and I'll attempt to give you a part two uh, to this. There, there's so much to talk about. Let me give you some more scripture. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 20, uh, 23 uh, verses 16 and 17 said, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've been in conferences that people have attended because the theme spoke to a situation in their life where they really thought they could come and get a word from God. And most times it had to do with money. Let, let me just preface this. Money and marriage. Money and marriage. And then thirdly, business. Most people who come to conferences aren't really coming for their business. But they like to hear that their business is going to flourish. We'll get to that. But money and marriage... People want money and people want marriage. And those are some of the conferences. So those are some of the themes that you really have to keep your eyes open for. You have to truly be discerning. And then the other is prophetic conferences. Prophetic conferences. We have a, uh, a generation of prophetic junkies. I've heard that term used before. I didn't coin that phrase. Someone that we know quite, uh, 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 all know quite well, coined that phrase, I believe, years ago. Um, spiritual junkies. I'm sorry, prophetic junkies. They need the next word. They need the next fix. And so getting people like that to come to your prophetic conference is not a hard thing whatsoever. It doesn't matter what the theme is. As long as the idea and the concept is to come and get a word from the Lord. The Lord has a word for you at this conference. The Lord is going to meet you at this conference. The Lord wants to impart something to you at this conference. Not knowing who you are. But the Lord wants to, this is what the host, this is what those who will promote and market their, 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 their events. And there are people who are just waiting. 
And these are the people that attend conference after conference after conference after conference. They spend the money for the hotel. They spend the money for the airline, uh, for the transportation, the, the, the airfare. They spend money for the meals. They buy the clothes, uh, uh, the wardrobes. And all of this has to happen in order for them to come to a conference to get a word, to get a husband, or to get some money. And many times the presenters speak in such general, gen, generalities. In other words, they speak things that are so general that it could affect or touch somebody across the lines of, the, of those that are attending that somebody has to, has to, it has to fall on somebody. But the majority of these people, they leave hyped, excited, broke, and nothing changes. And guess what? They come back the next year. I don't know how many broke prophets got in trouble with that one. There are so many broke prophets. Who, who, who are leading people. They can barely make ends meet. I, I, I don't think that's God. We'll get into that some more. He says, do not listen to what the false pro- what the prophets are, are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds made up stuff they 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 craft messages that align with the theme of the conference this is the this is this is this is it the the, the theme is the engine of this whole thing it, it it's the thing that drives everything you hear me they speak visions from their own minds. In other words, they came with, 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 with made up messages that, 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 that mesh with the theme. It says, he says, not from my mouth, not from the mouth of the Lord. God said, I didn't, I didn't tell them. I didn't speak to them. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says, there's some people that are being prophesied to who don't know the Lord. That goes back to the point that I brought up earlier that the conferences that I've been to in so many occasions where there was never even an altar call. So many times there are people in those conferences where there's, they're receiving messages that don't even align with them because they don't even know God yet. They, they don't even know God. And they're being steered away from God the more. He says, they keep saying to those who despise me year after year after year. The Lord says, you will have peace. Well, they didn't have peace when they came last year. That's why they're back this year. They didn't have peace two years ago when they came before. They didn't have peace. When are they going to get the peace that they need to stand on their own feet? When are they going to get the peace that they don't have to come and travel to hear someone talk to them? What about your pastor? What about your Bible? And all and to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. So in many conferences, themes are birthed out of the minds of, 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 of leaders. They came up with it. God didn't give them that. They came up with it. What would be a good thing? What, 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 what do you think would draw the people? 
I told you there was going to be a level of transparent. I was going to share with you and, and be and be transparent. And I'm going to be right at this moment. I've been in that same very moment. This is where the conviction came. Because I've been in that moment where I said, you know what? We need to do a conference. But what do you think will, what do you think will make the people come? Well, who, who can we invite that will draw a crowd? God delivered me from that. He delivered me because I read his word, because I trusted him, because I, 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 I went to God about it. So they come up with, with, with lead these themes, uh, they, they, they come up out of the minds of these, of these, of these uh, conference hosts, and, and God did not say anything to them. And, and what they're doing when they come up with these themes, what they're doing now is they're, they're, they're giving people false hope, making promises of success, prosperity, and all of this stuff that we're talking about is rooted in personal ambition rather than God. Word moving forth in their life as it should. I need, okay. One of the conferences that have taken place recently, or quite a few of the conferences, have been centered around the presenter proclaiming that if people give a certain amount of money, their businesses are going to be Blessed, their businesses are going to explode. I just don't find that in the Bible, and I'm not talking about uh, 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 the words, uh, 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 you know, literally, but just to make those types of promises to people who, number one, you don't know if they're saved. Number two, you don't know if they're in sin. You haven't spoken to their relationship or what what their positioning needs to be with God. We, we don't know their level of faith, amen, although you're testing their level of faith uh, to give money, but that's not really faith because if it's predicated on the wrong idea, if it's predicated on the wrong prerequisite when it comes to God, then no matter how much money they give, it's not going to gain them anything because they gave it under the false pretense. And this starts with the theme of the conference. It works its way into everything that is taking place. Everybody that will be affected in the conference based on the theme, everybody that will be affected, it, 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 it will impact, their, their lives will be, be impacted by something that came out of the mind of someone who came up with an idea or a theme for a conference that they say God said, and God said I didn't. Meaning that if they came up with it on their own, God could not be present in it. And so no matter who you bring in, if they can only craft topics and messages that align with a theme that did not come from God, it is not going to work. How can two walk together except they be in agreement? God is not walking with you when it's you. God is not walking with you when you when he says, I have not said that out of my mouth. Don't say I said it and expect me to be a part of it. Don't say I said it when I didn't and expect me to bless it. This is what's happening. And all of this starts with a concept, a theme that someone came up with at the dining room table or in their car or they heard somebody say something on the radio or on the internet and they said, wow, that would be a good thing for the conference. No. Ladies and gentlemen, God is more authentic than that. He will give you, if he gives you the assignment, he will give you the verbiage, he will give you the words to speak, he will give you the words to write, he will give you everything that is needed. That is why I'm really, really, 
apprehensive and I'm cautious about trying to put things together and say or, or, or doing a conference and say that is God when I have not seen the whole picture. I've actually been working and waiting for God to give me the right uh, 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 um, uh, uh, concept for what he wants to do uh, concerning a theme for families I, 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 and, and then a, conf, a con, uh, conference for evangelism evangelism and even though those are very simple and straightforward uh, uh, topics and, 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 and focuses things that we could focus on that did, wouldn't take a lot because those are very 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 clear issues that need to be addressed family uh, 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 and evangelism soul winning but even with that we need to hear from God because not only do we need God to give us the theme, but we need God's timing. Yeah, we need God's timing. We need God to show us who he wants to be in this and not just pull people out of the air and not just say, who can we bring in to draw somebody, to draw a crowd? Do you understand? All this God gave me in a revelation that starts with themes and I'll be finished with this and we'll come back to it. And so they, 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 they promise false hopes. They give them uh, promises of success, peace, prosperity. And the problem is this. It's a dangerous practice. And I'm talking to people now who do this year in and year out. Be aware that there are some people that are being misled by your actions. And to think that you have to do it again and again and again and again. Because now it's become a ritual. And I understand, I've been in it. I've seen people get excited about what's being said. I've seen altars fill up. And the issue of sin never comes up in the conference. And after all of the altar activity, the conference closes out with no altar call that's how I know it wasn't God because God would not call you to gather people who don't know the Lord or who may need to be revived who may need to 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 come back to God recommit their lives how can God be in it and the mention of sin never comes out. How can God be in it and his son not be offered? Because the theme was off. It was never about God in the first place. And the people who left excited and hyped, they can't wait till next year because now they are full of emotionalism. They're emotional. We have to be able to discern when it's God and when it's emotion. When it's God and when it's hype. If the message is void of doctrinal substance, it can't move. It can't, it, it can't provide salvation. If it's void of doctrinal substance, it can't provide healing. It can't provide anything that we need from God if the doctrine has no doctrinal substance. I'm talking about truth, which I started out talking to you about at the beginning of this broadcast. The Bible says you shall know the truth. 
and the truth shall make you free. Listen, that's all I have for now. I'm going to come back with a part two. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Um, I pray that, 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 that God has spoken to your heart. This is not to tear down or throw shade on every conference. Yes, there are people who are moved and thank God there are people in the body of Christ who truly hear from God. Amen. And it's not about money. It's not about uh, exposure and fame. But it's truly about rep representing Christ to the world and even to the church. Until next time, God bless.